move on to the next topic for today and it was virtual machines. Earlier when uh, Windows Azure was launched, you had options like web role and worker role. Those were the virtual machines provided under the platform and the service stack. Under that stack, you had option to host your applications on uh, existing Windows OS. So there are two things. One, when you go with web role and a worker role, you don't have control over the VM. Second, the only OS which was available to you was Windows Server. So there were a lot of customers uh, looking for a Linux based virtual machine. A virtual machine where the end user or the, the administrator can have a control on. And that's where uh, to relief of all these users, Microsoft launched the Windows Azure virtual machine. These virtual machines which you create on the Windows Azure infrastructure as a service platform, as the Microsoft Windows Azure platform, these images are of two types. They definitely have continued Windows Server and added to the stack uh, on Linux as well. So Windows Server comes with two flavors. Windows Server, you can have a Windows Server 2008 configured VM or you can have a Windows Server 2012 VM. So you can choose which OS you want. You either want 8 or 12. You don't have support for the older versions than this. And now you also have uh, control or you can have a choice of uh, which flavor of Linux that you want. So today you have dual option. You can choose Linux, you can choose Windows Server as a virtual machine base for hosting your applications. Like I said earlier, in web role and the worker role, you had little control on the virtual machine. But in this case, in this component of the service platform, you have full control on your VM. You create a VM and then you choose what to deploy, how to deploy on that. Now, when you do all these settings, when you install, when you deploy your applications on these VMs, the good part of that is all this gets stored as a persistent storage. Now, the persistent storage in Windows Azure are of two types. You can have the Windows Azure storage device, uh, storage mechanisms under block tables and queues, or you have a storage of a storage mechanism which is RDBMS on Windows Azure platform is SQL Azure, and now it is called as SQL databases. However, the data of virtual machine, that the settings that you do, the instruction that you do, all things get stored as a blob. Blob is one of the storage options available on Windows Azure platform. So you don't lose anything. All what you, all settings that you do, are stored as virtual hard disk inside your storage account. I repeat. So whatever settings you do for your machines, they are stored as virtual hard disk. They are stored as VHD files, and these VHD files are stored as uh, under the block storage of Windows Azure. Now this block storage that is used for VHD files, it is, to be more precise, it is a page blob. There are two types of blob storage. There are uh, block blobs and page blobs. VHD files, which are susceptible for huge read writes, frequent read writes, and storing large amount of data, the page blobs are getting used to store this information. And that is where your Windows and your uh, virtual machines are persistent in nature. They keep all your settings. To add to this, uh, you also have uh, support for doing a load balancing. You can have multiple virtual machines and then you can load balance the request which are coming to the set of load balanced virtual machines. So when your load increases, you know, currently let's say you have a scenario where you have hosted one virtual machine and you have application that is growing in popularity. So what you do is you add set of virtual machines and then 
you load balance your request across these load balance virtual machines. This is a, a very good option which uh, I'm going to show you when we do a demo. So we saw some scenarios when you can use virtual network. Similarly, the two top scenarios where you may want to choose virtual machines is one, if you have an existing application running on premise and you want to move that onto Windows as your cloud. You have two options again. You wrap or you package your existing application as a web role or a worker role depending upon the type of application and then host it on the Microsoft uh, Azure pl platform as a service components which are a web role or a worker role. But you, you will not have more control on the VM and you will take some time uh, you need a developer support to do that. However, if you want to just migrate from on-premise to your cloud, what you can do is you can create a virtual hard disk. You can create a VSD file from your Windows Server 2008 machine or Windows Server 2012 machine. You can create a VSD file using the tools which are available at the OS level itself. And these VSDs can be transferred onto the cloud into the storage. Like I mentioned, these VSDs, these VSD files can go to uh, block storage on Windows Azure. And then, using those VSD files, you can create a virtual machine on the cloud. There could be a question, what about licensing? The way it goes is something like this. We have a licensed Windows Server 2008 on premise. When you create a VSD and migrate that VSD onto Windows Azure, the Microsoft Azure platform manages the licensing for that. Which means every Windows Server 2008 or 2012 virtual machine which gets created on the cloud, Microsoft will manage the licenses. The virtual machine cost is included is inclusive of the maintenance cost as well as the licensing cost for Windows. For Linux, there will be no licensing cost involved. And that's why when I show you the next slide, you will see that from a costing perspective, the Windows OS are a bit costlier than the Linux-based uh, operating system virtual machines. That's because the licensing is included in that. Now, imagine a situ reverse situation where you want to take your virtual machine to on-premise. So when you take your virtual machine from your cloud onto your on-premise, at that time you will have to include manually the, the licensing key for the OS when you deploy it on the network. So I repeat, from on-premise to the cloud, Microsoft will take care of licensing of Windows servers, whereas from the reverse way, from the cloud, when you move back to your on-premise network, you as a IT pro or IT uh, developer will have to key in your licensing details onto that particular OS. Again, this product is in preview, but uh, it's not free. Uh, uh, we can see the costing a bit later. This is a very, very important slide. Uh, it talks about 